so freaking cold. But a few days ago, Ruth said, um, hey, there's snow in the forecast. And I went, ah, it's not going to snow. It did. <laughs> Ooh, God, that's nice and toasty. If I took Ruth's Suburban, this is not the experience I would be having right now. We have our first snow of the season, and it's like mid-November. Last year, our first snow was Christmas Day. It was 65 degrees yes yesterday or something like that. For some reason now, there's a giant blizzard. I thought I would take the opportunity to get out and shoot a video. What I wanted to talk about today was nomadic working and how I got into it. I started in design straight out of high school. This was in Southern California. I did that until about 2005. In 2005, I met my wife in LA. She's from Wales. She was living in England. I had been planning to um, literally enrolled in a university um, in Sweden to study furniture design. I already had two feet out the door. I was just waiting to leave, but then I met Ruth. And so I moved to England instead. Now those years that I was in LA, I tried to go freelance at least twice and both times failed. When I got to England, I basically had no other choice. I wasn't legally allowed to work for a British company for the first year I was in England. And so my only choice if I wanted to make any money was to set up a US-based company and freelance for um, US or English clients. There was no fallback. That first kind of six months or whatever it was, I started working from home and got really bored really quick. And then I started just going to cafes. After my first year in England, Ruth and I got married. Yay! I had spent that year building up this company and building up clients. And to th at that point, I thought, oh, you know, just, you know, get a job. Then I thought, wait a second, I've just spent the last year making my own schedule. Why the heck would I go sit in an office for 40 hours a week? So I was like, well, I guess not. And then the summer came and I started sitting outside, like just randomly and going, oh my God, there's like so many other better experiences that I can have just by not sitting indoors. I happened to find a little niche that allowed me to do it. Back then it was kind of hard to find. Now it's not at all. There's so many jobs out there where you can work remotely. I just really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the freedom and it was just, I found it really inspirational being able to work from wherever. It became like an addiction. It fueled my creativity. I was in England for, I believe it was seven, maybe just over seven years. From England, you could get really, really cheap flights all over the place. I'm talking like crazy cheap. One pound like weekend return flights to Paris. Ruth and I just, we did that stuff. We, we traveled a lot. And when you do something that you love for work, it's not really a problem to keep working. <laughs> it sounds fun, right? It was. <laughs> After that time, Ruth and I decided to move to California to be close to my family, and so we did. We moved. We were there maybe a year, 18 months, and then we moved up to northern Colorado where we are now, as you can see. I think I'm gonna get inside and warm up or go... I was gonna say go grab a coffee, but I already have a coffee. Grabbing another coffee sounds really nice for some reason. Why do I like that idea? What was that? Every now and then we get an animal that gets stuck in a trash can. <laughs> the first time I experienced it, it was a squirrel. And the second time it was a squirrel 
And the third time it was a raccoon. And it was huge, this thing. Adorable, but a little scary. Crazy dog. Ugh, it's so cold. You get that like, permanent sort of pain face when you're out in the snow or the rain or something. Everybody does it. It's like this. Urgh. I wanted to leave you guys with that. And let me know what you want to hear. Leave it in the comments. Make sure to subscribe, of course. You don't